President Bola Tinubu has ordered a 60% slash in the travel and for federal government officials, including his own office, that of his vice and his wife. And a suspended Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Dr. Beta Edu, has faced the FCC, EFCC's inter, uh, investigators today at the EFCC headquarters in Abuja. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the program. This is Politics Today live on Channels Television. I'm Sean Joaquim Aloe in Abuja. Let's bring you up to speed with the latest in respect of the President uh, Tunubu's order yesterday for the suspension of the Minister of uh, Humanitarian Affairs, Dr. Better Edu. The EFCC invited the minister to his office to answer to some questions relating to the over 585 million Naira contract scandal alleged to have been defrauded by uh, the... Uh, by those who have raised eyebrows on some of the processes involved in the disbursement of the funds in the ministry. The minister has since this morning appeared before the EFCC and she's been grilled by the investigators. She appeared, we understand, at about 8, uh, 11 a.m. today alongside some of our aides and our lawyer. Our major story tonight, everyone, is what President Bola Tinubu has said. He slashed 60% of travel costs for officials of the federal government, for those in his office, whenever he's traveling, and his vice and his wife. Now, we'll be getting uh, details of what this means. Is this the real meaning of cutting cost of governors? But there are those who will say, President, Bola, uh, President uh, Buhari did the same thing. What is the difference? I mean, after all said, in fact, if you remember and recall that when President Buhari did it, in fact, it went down to even what the cutting in the cost of what federal officials would take to travel, which is called the Esther Code. Well, is this the real meaning of cutting cost of governance when government officials will say that Nigerians need to tighten their belts and perhaps, why are they tightening their back? What other means uh, should they also be looking at? We'll be hearing from the federal government side, and we'll be here, we'll be getting some expert. And those who have been in those offices before, we'll be hearing from them tonight on the program. Don't go anywhere. My guests tonight, in every sense of the word, they are high profile. Stay with me, everyone, because first and foremost, we need to show you some of your political roundup stories. The Supreme Court has reserved judgment in the appeal by the Plateau State and Delta State governorship elections. A five-member panel led by Justice John Okoro upon hearing the arguments of the parties in the matter stated that the date for judgment will be communicated to the parties. Justice Yang Ekwo of the Federal High Court in Abuja has declared Senator Samuel Anyaou as a valid National Secretary of the People's Democratic Party. Justice Ekwo in the judgment gave an order restraining the national leadership of the PDP from appointing any person as acting national secretary when Anyaou's four-year tenure is still running and subsisting until December 9, 2025, in line with the party's constitution. Independent National Electoral Commission in Kano has announced that all required preparations have been made for the February 3rd by-elections for the State Assembly in Kunchi, Sanyawa, Kura, Garin Malam, and Rimin Gado Tofa. The state's resident electoral commissioner, Abdu Zango, stated this at a stakeholders meeting at the commission office in Kano. Speaker of the River State House of Assembly, Martin Ameule, says the state governor, Mr. Siminalai Fubara, is yet to make available both the medium-term expenditure framework and the 2024 appropriations bill to the House. The speaker made this known during the first plenary for the year 2024 in Port Arcot. The senator representing Abian North District, Senator Oju Zokalo, is urging President Bolatinu to prioritize power and security challenges bedeviling the country and boost economic development in the year 2024. He was addressing newsmen at his country home in Igbere while donating operational vehicles to the police. 
Senator Kahlo identified crime, epileptic electricity as one of the major problems facing the country as he urges the president to address these issues. The leadership of the Labour Party has reacted to the defection of the former Director General of the 2023 Presidential Campaign Council, Mr. Doni Okupe, from the party. Mr. Okupe recently announced his resignation from the Labour Party, citing ideological conflict as the reason for his resignation. But in a statement by the National Publicity Secretary of the Labour Party, Mr. Obiora Ifo, the party notes that it is not in any way surprised by the exit of Mr. Okupe from the party describing his action as a true character of traditional politicians who move from one party to another. Thank you so very much, everyone. Well, we've decided here on Politics Today to give you some tests. For those who are ardent viewers of... Uh, politics today, and you've been following some of what we talk about right here on this program. We want to put, you, uh, put some tests to you, whether to test how much you know of Nigeria's politics. Well, tonight we will start. And this is a little quiz, which will come with some kind of incentive. Well, there will be incentive, which we will announce to you. Uh, but the first quiz that we will be throwing out tonight, let's take a look. Our question to you is, who won the 1979 presidential election and on what party platform? Is it uh, from the option, Shehu Shigari of the NPN, Abafemi Awolowo of the UPN, Inamdi Azikwe of the MPP? Which is it? Well, tweet to us and let us know what your answers are. We might just randomly pick from those of you who have... Uh, tweeted, and uh, we might be able to determine uh, who wins on this particular quiz. How much of Nigeria's politics do you know? We're putting you to test on the program. So we begin tonight. Who won the 1979 presidential election and on what political platform, political party platform? Sheo Shagari of the NPN, Obafemi Aolo of the UPN, or Enambi Azikwe of the NPP? Let us know what your views are. And those of you who have been around then, if you voted, if you remember, let us know also. Well, before the end of the program, we will let you know what the answer is. So let's get back to our conversation, everyone. President Bola Tinobu has directed a major slash of travel delegations for all federal government official trips within and outside the country. The special advisor on media and publicity, Ajuri Ngilale, disclosed this during a press briefing at the State House in Abuja. According to the special advisor to the president, the directive means a 60% slash across board and affects all MDAs, including the office of the president, the vice president, and the first lady. We're breaking it down for you to know, but first, let's listen to Mr. Ngilale on the announcement and the order of the president. The following limits have been placed on all ministers of the Federation. Four members of their staff, uh, appointees and the like, uh, will be allowed to travel with a minister on an official trip. For heads of agency, that will be limited to two members of staff allowed to travel on an official trip. On international trips, the president has directed that no more than 20 individuals be allowed uh, to travel with him. The number in the entourage on official international trips for the vice president will be cut to five. The number that will be uh, limited, the number that will be placed uh, as a limit uh, on the wife of the vice president is also five. In terms of local trips, the president has approved a new limit of 25 members of staff to accompany him on domestic trips within the country. Uh, the office of the first lady is now limited to 10 staff members. Uh, to accompany her on official trips within the country. The vice president will be limited to 15 members of staff on official trips within the country, while his wife will be limited to 10 members of staff on official trips uh, within the country. All right, then. So let's show you the breakdown from what has been announced today. We do know now that from the president's trip, 
The president has cut down his own entourage to 20 for foreign trips. And of course, his vice and uh, his wife's office has also been for foreign trips. Uh, the president's office, 20 on his entourage. Uh, for the vice president, it's going to be uh, five and uh, five to uh, on the first lady. For local trips, it's slightly higher. Uh, it's 25 for the president on local trips. And for the vice president, I think it's about 10 or so. And for the first lady, it's slightly higher. But the president has also uh, hinted that security, whenever he's traveling, um, is going to be uh, from the state, uh, if it's traveling locally, the state will also be part of those who will uh, be involved in providing security um, uh, and is going to cut down on those security officials who will be traveling with him. At some point on the program also, we will be touching on corruption fight under Bolatunubu's government and what we have seen so far in terms of performance and activities of the Bolatunubu government. But first and foremost, let's talk about cutting the cost of governance based on what we have seen uh, under the uh, Tunubu, I mean, this announcement today. I'm being joined tonight from our Kano studio, a two-time governor of Kano State and a former minister of education, a former senator representing Kano State, His Excellency uh, Ibrahim Shekarao. He joins us live from our Kano studio. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, for joining us tonight. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure being with you, Shim. All right, great. Let me begin. Uh, this is not the first time we heard these um, from uh, the Buhari government. Now uh, we are hearing again very similar to what the Buhari government announced in the early days. Let me get your assessment of this particular announcement. Come again. Hello. Yeah, uh, Governor Shekara, I don't know if you're going to hear me now. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I can, I can hear you now. Oh, fantastic. You now. So my, my question is, this is not the first time. At least in the Andabuari government, they said they wanted to cost, cut the cost of traveling for go federal government officials. And that was announced. In fact, they were saying that they were going to cut the cost of Esther code also for those who are traveling out of the country. And they were going to tighten the belt. That's what we heard under the Buhari government. But coming under the Tunubu government, making this time of this kind of announcement, what do you make of it? Well, I think, uh, Sharon, let me first of all uh, commend the swift action by Mr. President. I think the issue of uh, cost of governance has been on the table for many years. Uh, people will recall that during the Jonathan's administration, uh, the issue came on board seriously uh, to the point that Jonathan appointed the famous Orisenya uh, Committee. The Orisenya Committee came up with a very, very wide range of uh, advice and recommendations. Uh, unfortunately, it was almost towards the end of the administration. And I understand the Jonathan government handed over the report of the Orisenya Committee to the Bihari administration. Uh, unfortunately, not much was done. In fact, almost not even much. Nothing was done uh, as far as that report was concerned. Uh, what we even saw was uh, a continuation of uh, beyond business as usual. And uh, we kept crying, we kept borrowing uh, to make up uh, the budget. Uh, unfortunately, uh, that was not done. So I think those of us, uh, all Nigerians who knew about the Orisenya Committee report, which was purposely meant to uh, address the issue of uh, too much expenses and duplication in the a process of governance, uh, nothing was done. So I think uh, my first reaction is to commend the Tinibu administration for the first step. This is the first step, I believe, and uh, it's very encouraging. 
Uh, people say if you are going to the sky and you step on the uh, first stone, you are almost uh, on your way forward. I think uh, this will send a message across. And uh, I only pray that it will go far beyond that. My main recommendation to the Chinebo administration is let them bring up the recent year report. Of course, uh, some part of the recommendations might have been overtaken by events. But all the same, I'm sure uh, 70 to 80 percent of that committee report will still be relevant. Uh, if you take the issue of uh, uh, duplication in governance, agencies, over 500 uh, plus titles in government, uh, there are a lot of them that are almost uh, carrying similar assignments. And by the time you put them together, I know what we hear from the background is that uh, most of the agencies recommended to be merged uh, were all out in arms to stop it because chief executives and uh, paraphernalia of government uh, facilities, directors and permanent secretaries and uh, board members and so on, all that has to go if you merge uh, some of these agencies. But if it is for the better, uh, I'm sure uh, that will go a very long way to, uh, to further assure Nigerians that this government uh, is up and doing. I think uh, this first step uh, is uh, a very good step in the right direction. Uh, another thing that will assure us the swift action on the Minister of uh, Humanitarian uh, Ministry, because... Uh, of course, it is still at the level of allegation, uh, quite all right, but suspending her to go into the investigation uh, is also reassuring. I think uh, uh, one may probably say that, uh, well, you are from the opposition, you are PDP, and you are commanding government of APC. I think uh, our opposition is not a blind opposition. When you do right, we commend you. When you go wrong, we tell you you go wrong. Uh, because our main concern and objectives uh, in politics, or personally, is to see good governors. Even if it is from Shaitan's party, uh, once you perform and you are serving the uh, public and you are addressing the aspirations and the expectations of the public, uh, we commend you. So I think uh, this is a first step. And uh, since it is extended to ministries, I want to urge the state governments too uh, to emulate, to borrow a leaf from uh, uh, the federal government by taking some steps. Uh, there are a lot of wastages, even at the state level, uh, traveling uh, expenses, even places where uh, governors and even federal government officials, including the president, where they can go by road, uh, taking chartered flights, uh, is also another thing that has to be stopped. And I think uh, to even show to Nigerians that regardless of whether the roads are uh, vulnerable or not, Nigerians are flying this road. And it will be very encouraging if they see uh, government officials from the president downwards going to a particular state, uh, going by road, instead of uh, uh, carrying uh, chartered aircrafts, particularly for the ministries uh, for the president, one can understand uh, there is the presidential fleet, but even then, uh, I think uh, if the president, the vice president, the ministers, uh, chief executives or prostitutes, uh, as we know very well, uh, there were instances some uh, former ministers in previous governments who have been prosecuted for spending billions of naira in hiring chartered aircraft uh, within local trips. Some of them, even foreign trips, they take chartered aircrafts uh, instead of taking the commercial uh, flights. So I think all of this uh, need to be put in check uh, by the government, and the state government should also sit up. I call on Mr. President to counsel all the state governors to take uh, a cue from all of this. Uh, we've heard of the 60% cut, the number of entourage going. For example, the securities. Sometimes even the presidential securities or vice president securities coming from Abuja 
performing the same job with the state security services. There is no security that you will not find in any of the states. But when they come, they attempt to take over yeah. from the state security. Yeah. And uh, in fact, sometimes you find that there are more security uh, personnel at a particular function than even the officials that are supposed to be there for the function. So they create more chaos and uh, disrupt. Uh, dis dis yeah, <coughs> let me let me let me I come in, Governor Shikarao. Yeah, let me quickly. Uh, if I may jump in here, uh, that those who are skeptic about um, this announcement, they will tell you in October of 2019, a very similar pronouncement was made by the presidency under the Muhammadu Buhari government. And those who will say, we've heard this thing before, but it is never there too. What's your view about that kind of situation? Uh, those who say it's just lip service and nothing else. Maybe you have to come on. There is some disruption. I'm afraid, child, I didn't get that as okay. part of your I, I, I was asking can you, that... Can you come again? Yes, as much as uh, the, those who hear this and applaud... President Tsunobu for making, taking this step. Those who will say, okay, we cannot afford what is being spent to cater for those who are in government. That the Nigerian government or the, our powers as a, nation, as a nation cannot afford to uh, bear the cost of, of travels of uh, uh, long retinue of people following government officials. But there are those who are skeptical also who will say, look, we've not, this is not the first time we are hearing this kind of thing. In October of 2019, President Muhammad Buhari made the same announcement. And there are those who will say, uh, it was never followed through. It was just lip service, nothing more. Well, if I think that if I get some part of what you're saying is to do uh, with, uh, are you saying in 2019, Buhari government was... Uh, uh, to implement all of these things or what? I didn't quite get uh, the, the, there are a lot of uh, noise along the line. I'm so sorry, I didn't get quite. Uh, I was saying Buhari government uh, also made similar pronouncement and it was never followed through. Oh, and those oh, who will say it is oh, Tinubu government also is following, it's doing the same thing, but it might just be lip service. Well, I think, uh, you see, it is one thing to make the pronouncement, it's another to ensure full implementation. I think uh, we will look forward to see the pronouncement has been made. As you said, Buhari government made similar pronouncements and made promises. In fact, I remember Buhari government even said uh, no official should travel with a first class flight uh, when you're traveling out of the country. Uh, but he even said, uh, Nobody will be traveling, no government official will travel out for medical attention. Unfortunately, uh, none of this was implemented, including himself. You see, God was wonderful. Uh, he was the first victim, and uh, we saw him traveling out and staying for months. So I think uh, uh, we, we, we cross our fingers so, to see how much of the pronouncements will be implemented. And I think unless it is... Uh, properly monitored, uh, particularly in the case of the ministers and chief executives of the press status, uh, I expect office of the secretary to the government to follow up and pr probably assign a particular desk officer to monitor all of this. And uh, any minister or any chief executive that is found to have violated this uh, should be sanctioned uh, almost immediately uh, because Saying it without implementing it will be uh, very discouraging and uh, it will give a very wrong signal uh, to subsequent uh, measures. I think this is very important. Unfortunately, the previous government uh, made a lot of uh, similar efforts and uh, commitment. Ashew, uh, let me add, it's, uh, not only the state governments, uh, the legislature should also borrow a leaf from uh, these this, this directives. And uh, another angle that I expect Mr. President to address is the number of appointees. Uh, I know in the uh, uh, democratic process, uh, once you're in government, you have too many people to, 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 to appoint, to assist you. Uh, some of them may not even necessarily be 
uh, required in terms of uh, productive uh, performance or services. I think this is another area that probably uh, all political office holders, government should come up with some uh, minimum or rather maximum number of special assistance right from the president and uh, the vice president and the ministers. And I want to call upon the leadership of the National Assembly, uh, which of course is supposed to be independent of the executive, but uh, to also borrow a leaf from this. Uh, I expect to hear from the leadership of the two chambers of the National Assembly uh, what else they will do as well uh, to uh, cut uh, cost of governance in terms of their own traveling, in terms of their own supporting staff, uh, appointments, and so on. There are a lot of wastages both in the legislature and in the executive arm. And I think this will be telling Nigerians that, yes, uh, the political uh, group now means business. There is no point uh, spending huge sum of many billions in terms of traveling and appointing people just to patronize them uh, to give my boys job. I think these are areas that uh, we look forward but to see. If, if for example, uh, uh, Senator, if you, for example, you're talking about National Assembly members and cutting uh, there, the cost that goes into running the National Assembly. In what specific areas would you advise? You've been there before, so you know. Well, well, I think my, my, my advice, from my experience in the last four years in the National Assembly, I think uh, traditionally every National Assembly member is entitled to five supporting staff. I think as a start, I don't think from the practical work that one sees there. You don't need more than two. Uh, of course, there is always a secretary by the office to handle correspondences, and probably one or two uh, other special uh, supporting staff that will help you do a lot of uh, research work and uh, running around to get details, or probably when you point, want to put up some uh, documents. But I think a situation whereby you have five times 469 uh, supporting staff uh, showing you can see that uh, it's, 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 it's quite uh, a huge but, but is it also also I mean, since you've been there you've you've seen it you've uh, you've done it so you can tell you being a governor you've been a minister and you being a senator is it fair to also i mean for those who believe that the national assembly me members in nigeria are some of the highest paid in the world. I mean, those who are also advocating that we do not even need a bicameral legislature in Nigeria, that we just need only one. It's just a sheer waste of resources to keep two, uh, two, two, two arms of, uh, of the legislature in Nigeria. Do you think so? Well, I think, uh, Sherwin, I have held the opinion, particularly after serving there, that... Uh, and I've said it a number of times, that uh, we really don't need the bicameral uh, chambers. I don't think we need such uh, uh, an arrangement. Unfortunately, uh, we went and uh, lifted the entire structure of the American system with the two chambers. We don't, I don't think we require that. Uh, one particular legislative uh, arm of the government will be quite sufficient. Uh, we either reduce the numbers, or bring one into uh, uh, one chamber of the legislature. I think that will go a very long way in reducing uh, the cost of governance. Now, talking of the uh, take home, uh, most people do not know that uh, there is the salary of the National Assembly members is independent of the running cost. You see, uh, so what people term as a very big take away. Uh, I want to assure you, and I expect the National Assembly leadership to probably come up and, and, and explain the details. You see, the amount of money being given, that is the salary, which is uh, uh, prescribed by the Revenue Mobilization and Fiscal Commission, 
and uh, that is fixed, the way they fix that of the president and any political office holder. And that is what you call the running cost, just like the expenses in the presidency, fueling, uh, courtesies, and so on and so forth, traveling expenses, uh, visitations, oversight visits, and so on. Every couple of the cost, running cost being given to the legislators is being accounted for every month. Uh, most people do not know that. Monthly, every legislator must retire uh, the uh, running cost given and say exactly, specifically, every item is itemized under the uh, running cost, independent of the salary. So it's not correct to say that uh, the take home of the legislators is the highest uh, paid. Uh, if you are going to take the running cost of the office of the president, it is not being given to the president. If the salary of the president is given or the co running cost of the president is given to him, you will find that it is running into billions. But for the legislators, they don't have the prophylaxia of government and governance. If you go to state, if you are to take the running cost of a particular governor's office, you'll find that it's running to uh, millions. So, but that is not called the salary of the governor. The governor has been paid his own salary uh, as prescribed by the Revenue and Mobilization Commission. So I think in the area of the running cost, that also can be revisited uh, by the leadership of the National Assembly uh, to see what areas uh, that are being spent, I mean money being spent on them, and see what corners they can cut and remove, probably if you remove uh, issues like uh, uh, newspapers, periodicals, and uh, limit it to traveling, oversight, visits, and so, there are a number of things that you can cut uh, to reduce Cost of governance. But, in but, uh, uh, Governor, Governor Shikara, uh, the other part is in the 2024 budget, about 15 billion is said to have been budgeted for travels in the presidency, which includes the office of the president and that of his vice. If based on what the presidency has, has announced today, it then means that if they are announcing a 60% cut in that, that means about uh, close to seven million, uh, billion has been cut. If, they, if it's true, and in practical terms, 60% cut in the cost of travel has been cut from the Tunubu government. That means that out of the 15 billion that was originally budgeted for in the 2024 budget, uh, will have been gone. So, but there are those who believe that that is not the real deal when we are talking about cost of governance. That go if government wants well, to show, or those who are in power want to show that they are serious in tightening their belt, telling Nigerians to also tighten their belt, you see the long uh, uh, motorway of uh, some of the government officials and in Saring all over Abuja city, that those who say that the, where the money is being really spent is not in those areas. Where do you think, if this government is truthful and want to really cut cost of governance, where should they be cutting? to show to Nigerians that they are really serious? Well, I think, uh, Sean, uh, I, I, I quite appreciate that they say 60% cut in the actual expenditure of running government. And this is doable. It's quite doable. And I'm sure even the legislature, too, can apply a similar thing, either 60 or 50 or whatever percentage, depending on the prioritization of their issues. And even the convoys, too, sometimes it becomes a nuisance, really, when there is too much uh, a crowd. I am happy a number of the states have, for a very long time, even my, my own time, even before uh, I came into office uh, in Kano and some few other states, they introduced the use of a very big, uh, almost 40, 50-seater uh, bus, uh, instead of the long convoy of about 15, 20 vehicles, every commissioner, every minister, or every chief executive carrying his vehicle, uh, one big bus and one or two staff cars and uh, the escort, uh, that's it. That will reduce, one, the cost of fueling, two, it will reduce the nuisance being created even in the road, disrupting the traffic, 
when the long convoy uh, is, 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 is moving, either the president or the governor or the vice president. I think uh, this uh, cross-board 60% cut announced by the federal government is a very welcome development. We will wait to see uh, what aspect of the governance uh, will be slashed, because when you say 60%, uh, it's quite a big cut. Uh, I, 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 I look forward to see this being properly uh, implemented, and I urge state governors, uh, the president should advise the state governors uh, to uh, emulate this, and I strongly call on the leadership of the National Assembly uh, to equally see what percentage they will cut in the uh, running cost of the National Assembly. Uh, even in the committees that we uh, form at the National Assembly, my right. uh, view is that that needs to be re uh, reviewed seriously. Okay. Governor, give me a moment. I need to go on a break. But when we come back, I, I have with me also on the program, I'd like to get his views. A former Minister of Communications, uh, Mr. Adebayo Shitu, he will also be joining us at some point on the program. We still have a former Governor of Kano State, Senator Ibrahim Shekharao, from our Kano studio. Stay with me, everyone. We're going to short break, and we'll be right back. That the minister, the suspended minister of humanitarian affairs, Dr. Beta Edu, uh, is still being uh, questioned by the investigators at the EFCC. And we understand that she might get bail from the anti graft agency today. She was, uh, so, uh, uh, she was uh, suspended by the president yesterday, and the EFCC had invited him moments after our suspension at about 9, 11 a.m. today. She had appeared before the EFCC and she's been facing uh, grilling by the investigators at the EFCC. But she, we understand that at the time that we speak to you, she's still there and she might get bail tonight. I've been speaking with the former governor, or two-term governor of Kano State, a former minister of education and a former senator who represented Kano State in the National Assembly, Governor uh, Ibrahim Shekharao from our Kano studio. But uh, I've since been joined also by the, uh, the former Minister of Communication, um, uh, Mr. Adebayo Shitu, who joins us virtually from Oyo State. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Shitu, and it's good to see you. Uh, let's get a moment, uh, uh, let's get your view. Uh, under the Buhari government, which you served, there was an announcement of the cut of cost of governance, but realistically, realistically, let's get your view. Practically speaking, does this work? It seems you're muted. Can you unmute your device, uh, Mr. Shito? Mm -hmm. All right. I, I don't know if you can hear me now and if you have I'll muted your device. Hello. Oh, good. I can hear you now. So please go ahead. Can you hear me? Did you hear the question, sir? I hear the question, sir. Now, what, what's the question? So I'm, I'm saying, under the Buhari government which you served, a similar announcement was made in the court of uh, the, the travel entourage, or cost of traveling under that government. And now we are hearing it under the Bola Tunubu government. What do you make of it? I'm, I want to know whether it is realistic. The president makes an announcement and whether the MDAs, the ministers, and government officials actually follow those kind of directives. Well, uh, yeah, man, I will sum it with you. Well, uh, your question is... Yeah, man, all right, it seems that, it seems that we, I'll give you a moment so that we can resolve some of the technical issues we are, we are, you are having there. But uh, uh, let me go to Kano with uh, Governor Shekharao. Uh, Governor Shekharao, I was, I mean, I'm particularly worried about the real aspect that has to do with where we can really save money. And there are those who are of the opinion that 
maybe we do not even need as much ministers in the federal cabinet as we have it today. Do you think so? And if, if that is the case, how many ministers do you think that Nigeria, based on our economy, can afford to fund? Well, thank you, uh, Sheun. I, I, I think uh, the issue of appointment of ministers need to be properly addressed. Uh, am I with you, Sheung? Yes, I, you're, I'm, I'm, we can hear you clearly. Please go ahead. Are you with me? Absolutely. Please go ahead. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, I was saying uh, the issue of ministers' appointment. It's uh, gradually, gradually uh, losing the constitutional uh, expectation. You see, the constitution envisages uh, all inclusiveness. You see, the issue is that the constitution says there has to be a minister in any given recognized state government. But unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, we are drifting away from the constitutional prescription. Uh, going by the constitution uh, prescription, uh, we need not to have 36 ministers, if you like, 37, if you add with the FCT. But the situation whereby we are having 40 plus, and all kinds of ministries are being uh, uh, established. I think uh, the Tinubu government needs to uh, go back to its drawing board. If they really mean business with the uh, uh, reducing the cost of uh, governance, it's not just about the uh, travels, it's not just about the uh, appointments of people here and there, but the issue of the, gov the president has appointed uh, uh, what I may call a very outrageous number of ministers. Of course, he may argue that he has the challenge of trying to involve and bring in more hands uh, into the government. I think it is uh, gradually getting to the reverse of the uh, Orisenia report, creating many more ministries uh, many more agencies, appointing many more ministers. Uh, I'm sure we don't need all of these uh, creations to have more than 42, 47, 48. Uh, sometimes it may even get to 15 ministers. Uh, Buhari promised to do it, and he started it. Unfortunately, uh, from the action they took, uh, there seemed not to have been a very serious background work. Uh, when he merged the uh, Ministry of Works, Housing, and the Power into one place, I think that is not the idea of uh, cutting down costs. You have to look at specific performances of giving ministries uh, before you do that. In the end, uh, he ended up uh, not doing the cutting down of costs in terms of uh, governance. So I think Another area that uh, Tinubu's government needs to reconsider. There is nothing bad in reversing the situation. If in the beginning he had 48 ministers, and now that the reality on ground is that government cannot afford all of this, there is nothing wrong in dropping if, some if of you the were, ministers. If, uh, 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 Shikarao, if you were ministry, President Tinubu, uh, I'm sure Nigeria. If, Shikarao, if you were President Tinubu. Just for a moment. If you are President Tunubu, what would you do differently? You wanted to be a president in this country at some point. But the question is, I mean, do we see a life of luxury, opulence, in the kind of federal government officials that we see today? Do they show that our nation is in, uh, is in a financial crunch? If you were president, would you do any differently? What kind of show would you tell Nigerians to let them know that you really are going to tighten the belt? Well, uh, I'm talking of uh, Nigerians tightening their belt or government. I didn't quite get that. No, no, I'm saying if you were President Tunubu today, what would you show to Nigerians okay. to let them know that the nation is not financially in good standing? And when you say government officials should show and tell that what the state of the pocket of the nation is, how would you show it if you were President Tunubu? 
it was shaking. I didn't get that quite right. Oh, are I, you saying what my advice to Tinubu or what? I, I'm saying if you were President Tinubu, you had a vision, you wanted oh, to be oh, president. Oh, oh, oh. If you were President Tinubu, what would you do differently to show Nigerians that the nation really oh, cannot oh, afford the life of opulence <laughs> that their government <laughs> officials are showing? Okay, I see. You're saying if I were Tinubu, of course. Uh, number one, I probably wouldn't go into all this large number of ministers. I will restrict myself to the provision of the constitution of a minister per state, including the FCT, and then probably see how we can merge. And I think uh, uh, the take-up point uh, shown, as I said earlier on, there is a report. If the government means business, bring up this report, maybe set up another emergency committee to review. The report has been there for almost a decade. I'm sure some part of it probably must have been overtaken by events. So there is need to look into it again. My suggestion is that the government, and uh, if I were to be there, is to bring this report, review it, and see what aspect of uh, cutting uh, cost will be applied. That report has covered a number of areas of reducing costs. It's not just about merging the agencies. You see, if you reduce all of this, now that you appointed almost 48 ministers, each of these ministers will have his own portfolio of special assistants, special advisors, official vehicles, the office you will create. You have to send a permanent secretary to such ministries and so on. So by the time you limit yourself to the constitutional provision, which is gradually being abused now, uh, you'll discover that you don't need all of this paraphernalia of staff and officers uh, spending huge sum of money in the chief executives of the new ministries uh, created. And the Bahari ended up even creating more agencies uh, than what was on ground. So instead of even going to the Orisenia report, reducing the agencies, they went ahead and created the, the more agencies. And Tidubu is doing almost about the same thing by creating too many ministries, uh, most of which can be handled by one or two uh, serious uh, ministers and ministries. So I think, it, uh, I'm not being uh, pessimistic, the first takeoff now is giving us some hope. Uh, probably uh, Nigerians will be ready to sacrifice if they see the government sacrificing. Uh, they do business as usual, by doing some, some of these measures, uh, people will begin to trust government. But what we have today is uh, people don't trust government because government keeps telling you no resources, but they see uh, very, very unnecessary spending all over the place. I'm not talking of the federal government alone, it's the same in the state, uh, borrowing money left, right, and center, and in the end, you find that uh, most of the projects are not projects that will generate more funds. There's nothing wrong borrowing if the borrowed money will be invested into an agency or a project that will, in the end, pay for itself, that will, in the, in the end, uh, increase the revenue generation so that you, the services of the new creation of the project will be going back to the people. So I think uh, the, the, the Tinubu administration uh, has given itself uh, a new uh, syllabus now, uh, coming from my background as a teacher, uh, the syllabus of reducing cost of governors. Mm, okay. They have gone into the first class. So we want to see what more will be done, and I pray it will be done. And by the time they do more of it, I assure you, without being told, the state governments will follow suit. I assure you, the legislature will have no choice but also to follow suit. Uh, the, 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 once the leadership uh, takes the front seat, uh, nobody will have any excuse uh, not to do the same. I assure you, this is the first take-up point, and I hope it will be sustained it will be practicalized so much so that uh, they can beat their chest uh, maybe in the next four years that they will be there uh, at least some measure of achievement in terms of 
reducing cost of governance. This is one of the major challenges on all the governments in Nigeria. I would like to take you to Kano's politics, though. Um, I know this is not part of uh, what we bargained for, but I mean, as a stakeholder, you are uh, being a, a two-time governor, and uh, what is going on in Kano? What do you make of it? It does look like uh, the two of your friends, the former governor, Ganduje, uh, former, uh, for, former governor and former senator, a former minister also, I, I mean, and mentioning all, all of these uh, uh, politics. And what is going on and what do you make of it? Uh, let me get that very clear. Are you talking of... Uh, kind of politics. The kind of politics, yes. Uh, what about it? What so, did you I'm ask? saying, well, I mean, there's being uh, heated uh, some tension in the, in the state within the NNPP camp and the APC camp uh, in view of the court cases that we have seen, and also the governor Ganduje camp uh, and uh, the, the, the former governor's camp also, all of these is raising some tension. But you also, because these are your friends, what do you make of what is going on in Kano politics? Well, I think, uh, you see, Sharon, uh, anybody that has been following my own uh, characteristics in politics. Uh, it is politics of peace, politics without bitterness. And I see all my political fr uh, uh, friends as friends and the political associates, regardless of the political leaning, whether you are in party A or in party B, in party C, when it is time to contest, we go on to the field, we campaign, and once the elections are held and results declared, my attitude is that if you have clear evidence of any malpractice, you go the civilized way, go into the court, and once the court pronounces its stand, you can pursue it probably up to the last point. Once that is done, the game is over, you go back to draw a board, whether you win or lose, and prepare for the next uh, round of election. There is a popular saying that uh, uh, whoever is going into election and is not prepared to lose and accept losing, uh, is really not a very uh, civilized uh, candidate. You go into election knowing very no amount of uh, uh, certainty will give you 100% assurance. Uh, once the voters come and they decide, uh, you accept. As I said, that does not mean you just take any rubbish. If you find that there are reasons for you to go forward, you take the civilized way. I don't believe in any crisis or do or die approach. So I assure you in Kano we have been preaching this. Now that the governorship tussle is in court, uh, we keep our fingers crossed, but I've been advising both parties at the moment, APC and NMPP that are in court, All right. that once the Supreme Court decides, let's be in peace and accept. Uh, and I've been appealing to them, uh, abuses, uh, hate rate, hate speeches, uh, enmity will not give you or deny you uh, All right. Power. Uh, okay. Now that you've gotten to the last point, our prayer, I've called on all students of Kano, uh, let's join in prayers. Our prayer is that may the decision be God's own decision. And may it be, whatever way it turns out to be, to be in the best interest of Kano students. After all, all uh, right. regardless of the party you are, in the end, the people you want to serve is a common pool. All right. Thank you so I'm much. I'm not going yeah, to not... serve any other yeah. person. Yeah. So, if, yes, so uh, we have been appealing to people to, to, uh, to, to, to take it kindly. All right. Thank so you so much. I'm sure. I'm not sure. Uh, for, your, yeah, for your take on that and some of the views that you have mm -hmm. shared on uh, this very important national issue. Thank you so much. It's good to see you again. Uh, governor Ibrahim Shikaro, former <laughs> governor of Kano State, a former minister of education and former senator. Thank you so much indeed. We appreciate your time tonight. Yes. 
Thank you very much, Shaun. I look forward to seeing you Thank again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. It's unfortunate. We tried as much as possible to get Mr. Adebayoshi to uh, on the line virtually, but unfortunately, uh, connection is being so difficult tonight. I, I will get him back uh, in the studio with us. But before we go, let's touch on and give you some updates on our top story tonight. One of our top stories, that is, is, is the grilling of uh, the um, suspended Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Dr. Better Edu, who we understand may get a bill tonight from the EFCC cut study. Uh, she was invited yesterday. She appeared about 11 a.m. today. And we understand that aside herself, the MD and the CEO of Zenith, Providence, and Jais Bank were also invited but not arrested. And they have been questioned in respect of uh, these allegations that has caused uh, a public uproar. Well, just before we go, I've seen a, a quite, quite a lot of uh, uh, responses on some of your uh, responses on the question that we're our quiz for tonight. And the question is, uh, for those who, who didn't catch the early part of the program, and I'm going to show you the answer, of course, who won the 1979 presidential election and on what party platform? The answer is Shehu Shagari of the MPN. Now you know. Tomorrow again, we'll bring you yet another quiz. For those of you uh, who had answered, well, in the, subsequently, we'll be having some incentives which we will get. But that's how we close the program tonight. Thank you so much indeed, everyone, for watching. I'll see you tomorrow again. God bless Nigeria.